Digestive enzymes are not the only enzymes inside our body that must be activated via the process of proteolytic cleavage. Another set of enzymes found inside our body that are also activated via the process of proteolytic cleavage are the enzymes involved in creating blood clots. And the process by which we create blood clots is known as the blood clotting cascade. So let's suppose we have some type of trauma inside our blood vessel. And so the endothelium of that blood vessel basically ruptures. We have a cut in our blood vessel. Now what begins to happen is two different processes, two different pathways begin to take place. One of these pathways is a quick process and the other pathway is a bit slower. So we have the extrinsic pathway, that's the quick one, and we have the slightly sl uh, slower one, that's the intrinsic pathway. So in the extrinsic path of what happens is as a result of that cut in the blood vessel, we have a glycoprotein found in the membrane of that blood vessel that is exposed. And that membrane glycoprotein, the integral, uh, the integral glycoprotein is known as tissue factor or TF. So all the molecules in this diagram that are purple, they're simple proteins. And in this case, this is a glycoprotein. The blue molecules are zymogen, so basically enzymes in their inactive form. And the red molecules are the active form of enzymes. So purple molecules are proteins, they're not enzymes. The blue molecules are the zymogen form of the enzyme and the red molecules are the active form of that enzyme. So once we have the rupture, we have the exposure of the tissue factor and basically once the TF is exposed to the blood plasma, we have this molecule that is activated. So Zymogen 7 is activated into its active form. And, this, this, and, and then this enzyme number 7 basically binds onto the tissue factor to form an active complex, which then goes on and basically activates Zymogen 10 into its active form. So this is basically the extrinsic pathway. And the entire purpose of this extrinsic pathway is to basically create a quick response and activate this important protein enzyme 10. Because it's enzyme 10 after combining with another protein 5 that basically activates prothrombin into thrombin. And then it's thrombin that is used to actually form the blood clots that are used to seal off that particular rupture in the blood vessel. Now at the same exact time to amplify, to greatly increase the number of X that we activate, we also have the other pathway, the intrinsic pathway. And so in the intrinsic pathway, what happens is as a result of the exposure of the collagen found in the extracellular environment outside that blood vessel. So basically as a result of that cut in the blood vessel, we basically create a cascade of events. We have these activation events taking place. We have Zymogen 12 activated into its enzy uh, enzyme 12. Then enzyme 12 activates 11 into its active form. 11 then activates 9 into its active form, which combines with protein 8 to basically activate the same X, the same enzyme 10, Zymogen 10, that we have in this case. And so these two pathways basically converge to form this single pathway we commonly call the final common pathway or simply the common pathway. And so as a result of these two different pathways, we have the amplification, the increase in the number of active X active 10 enzymes that we form and so we ultimately amplify the number of prothrombin that we activate into thrombin and once again thrombin then activates an enzyme known as fibrinogen into fibrin and it's the fibrin that ultimately forms our blood clots which basically looks something like this and we'll see exactly what that is in just a moment. So we see that the blood clot cascade is actually a pretty complicated cascade and actually it involves even more molecules than shown on the board and what it also has is many different types of positive feedback loops. 
For instance, what thrombin actually does is it not only activates fibrinogen into fibrin, as we'll discuss in detail in just a moment, uh, thrombin also creates many different positive feedback loops. So it actually moves on to many of these zymogens and it further activates those zymogens into their active form. And what these different positive feedback loops do is they further amplify the number of thrombin that we actually form. So that what happens is as soon as we have that rupture, we form many of these blood clots very quickly and very effectively so that none of that blood plasma actually leaks out into the extracellular environment found outside that blood vessel so that we can actually seal off that rupture very quickly and very effectively. So once again, when blood vessels experience trauma and rupture, our body uses over a dozen different enzymes and proteins to create a cascade of events that ultimately forms blood clots that are used to seal off that particular cut in that blood vessel. And again, we have these blue molecules. These are the zymogen enzymes. Then we have the red ones. Those are the active form of that zymogen and the purple molecules molecules, these molecules are basically proteins. They're not enzymes, they're proteins involved in actually assisting this cascade of events. So we have the extrinsic and intrinsic pathway, which basically work together to amplify the number of protein or enzyme X that we produce, which ultimately then follows the final common pathway. So the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways basically converge into the final common pathway that ultimately forms and activates thrombin, which then goes on to activate fibrinogen into fibrin. So blood clots are formed via a series of zymogen activations. This cascade consists of the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathway that work together to amplify the activation of an important serum protease known as thrombin. And thrombin is that serum protease that is needed to actually proteolytically activate fibrinogen, which then basically forms these aggregates we call fibrin molecules, which consist of this mesh-like network that is used to actually seal off that particular clot. So these are uh, that particular cut, and these are known as blood clots. Now, in addition, what we don't show is these many different types of positive feedback loops that we also have in this particular cascade. And as I mentioned earlier, for instance, we have thrombin that creates many different types of positive loops. And so it goes back to many of these zymogens and it basically activates the zymogens even further so that ultimately we amplify the number of blood clots that we form at the end. So in addition, thrombin creates many positive feedback loops that further amplifies the formation of the blood clots. Now, as we see, we have many examples of zymogen. So we have this is a zymogen, this is a zymogen, these are zymogens, and so forth. Now, the zymogen that we actually studied very well is this zymogen here. So this is the zymogen that we're going to study. We're going to see how thrombin, a serum protease, basically activates fibr uh, fibrinogen proteolytically into fibrin. And fibrin basically looks something like this. So let's discuss the process by which thrombin actually activates fibrinogen. So, this is basically the structure of a single fibrinogen molecule. And notice we have many different sections. In fact, we have six chains. Two of these chains consist of the purple A and lowercase alpha. Two of these chains consist of the blue B and the beta chain, the orange one. And two of these are our gamma, so the green one. So we have these green, those are the gamma. We have these are the orange ones, those are the beta. We have these light blue ones, those are the Bs. We have these purple uppercase A's, and then we have these red lowercase alphas. And so we have many different chains found in a single fibrinogen molecule. So this molecule is in its inactive form. This is the zymogen form of this molecule. Now, what exactly does thrombin actually do? 
So the entire goal of the extrinsic pathway and the intrinsic pathway is to basically amplify and activate this protein X, protein 10. And the enzyme 10 basically combines with 5 to go on and form thrombin from the zymogen form uh, prothrombin. Now thrombin is actually a serine protease and it will activate this fibrinogen molecule proteolytically and what it does is it cleaves at four different locations. So what are these four locations? So right here, right here, right here, and right here, and this is shown in the following diagram. So essentially the active thrombin goes on and cleaves at these four locations and what that does is it completely removes these two B chains and these two A chains and these four individual chains once they are removed we call them fibrinopeptides and so we remove these four fibrinopeptides and what we form is is a single active fibrin monomer. So this is basically what it looks like. So we remove these four chains and we form the following active fibrin monomer. So monomer simply means we have a single fibrin molecule in its active form. So thrombin is a serum protease that uses proteolytic activation to activate fibrinogen, this molecule, and the way that it activates it is by cleaving at four different sites on that molecule. And by cleaving at these four different sites, we basically form four in the, or uh, we basically remove four different peptides. And these four peptides are shown here. These are known as fibrinopeptides. And what we ultimately form is a fibrin monomer that consists of these three different subunits. So alpha, B, and gamma, and we have uh, twice the number of these. So these are the two of our, uh, the B, um, not the, so that should actually be not a B, but a beta. So this should be a beta. So we have two of these orange betas, we have two of these green gammas, and then we have these red alphas. And we basically removed these purple A's and those blue B's. Now, once we form the fibrin monomer, what exactly happens next? Well, by cleaving and removing these two sections and these two sections, we basically expose a very important section of that fibrin molecule. And because we expose that section of our fibrin, it activates that fibrin. And so one fibrin monomer will basically go on and interact with another fibrin monomer. And this process will continue until we basically form this very long mesh-like structure and aggregate we call the fibrin or simply the blood clot. And this is basically what it looks like. So the proteolytic cleavage of fibrinogen exposes regions of the structure that can interact with other fibrin monomers. Therefore, fibrin monomers spontaneously aggregate to form long fibrous structures called fibrin. So we have the aggregation of these fibrin monomers because now these sections here are basically exposed. And these sections found on the alpha unit, the red one, can basically interact and fit into these holes found on the green structures, those gamma units. And so this is basically what we form. So we have these red structures uh, found on the alpha that interact with the blue hole of, of the, um, the green structures, the holes found in the green structures, those gamma structures. And so we form this mesh-like structure, this mesh-like network of fibrin monomers, and we call this entire structure fibrin or blood clots. And these blood clots can basically aggregate right across that rupture and that seals off that rupture. So we have the polymerization of fibrin monomers that forms blood clots that can seal off uh, the ruptures that form as a result of that trauma. 
So we see that not only digestive enzymes are activated via the process of proteolytic cleavage, these enzymes that are part of the blood clot cascade are also activated via the process of proteolytic cleavage. And we see that proteolytic activation is a very dominant mechanism here because essentially the majority of all these different zymogens are activated via the process of proteolytic cleavage. So we have these zymogens, the blue ones here, these zymogens here, as well as the main zymogen, the prothrombin, which basically is active into the thrombin, and that goes on to activate the fibrinogen into fibrin, which ultimately forms those blood clots, those mesh-like networks of fibrin monomers that essentially seal off and prevent the leaking of the blood plasma from within that blood vessel and into the extracellular environment found around that blood vessel.